The first DJI mic setting you need to know about is the recording mode. To access all of the settings, swipe down from the top of the DJI mic receiver screen. You can then scroll or tap to navigate through the settings. The recording mode influences how the audio that's sent from the transmitters to the receivers gets sent down the audio cable to the camera. The DJI mic receiver and the audio cable that comes with it is a stereo cable, so you'll get a stereo signal going into your camera regardless. In your editor, these will be labeled left and right channels. The first recording mode is mono recording mode. That's what the M stands for here. In this mode, any audio transmitted from one or both of the transmitters will be combined and the same combined audio will be written to both the left and right audio channels. So in this video file here, you can see the audio is the same on the left and right, even though this was with two transmitters being used at the same time. If you're only recording with one transmitter anyway, then it doesn't really matter if you use this mono mode because you're only using one transmitter. But if you're recording using two transmitters at the same time, then you may want to use the next mode we're going to talk about. S means stereo recording mode is set. When you're using two transmitters, for example, a transmitter on two different people for an interview, the stereo recording mode setting will send the audio from one transmitter to the left channel and the audio from the second transmitter to the right channel. You can tap here to choose which transmitter goes on which channel. Here transmitter 1 will be on the left channel and transmitter 2 will be on the right channel. This mode is a better choice if you're using two transmitters at the same time because you can edit the audio from each transmitter independently in your editing software. For example, you can add EQ to person 1 and some compression to person 2 independently. You can't do that in mono mode because both people will be combined into the same audio channel. The third audio recording mode is mono with safety track. And you can see this little symbol here tells you that this mono safety track option is selected. Just as with mono recording mode, if you're using two transmitters at the same time, then the audio from both transmitters will be combined together into one channel, so you won't be able to edit them separately. But what you will get in this mode is a second copy of that combined audio sent to the camera at a lower volume level, negative six dBs less than the other channel. This can be useful if a person suddenly start shouting or talking louder and the audio on the main channel overloads. This negative 6 dB safety channel might let you recover part of the audio for an interview, for example, if the main channel got too loud and clipped. This mono with safety track mode is actually a great option if you're filming yourself all on your own and you're only using one transmitter anyway. It's going to give you that second copy at the lower volume level just in case you've set your volume levels a bit too high and you get some distortion. Doesn't matter that the channels get merged into one because you're only using one transmitter anyway. The receiver gain setting allows you to choose how loud the volume is that's sent from the receiver to the camera down the audio cable. You can use this along with the microphone input settings in your camera to get a good audio level. To reduce the volume that's sent to the camera, slide it to the left. And you can see here that the reduction in volume can go all the way down to negative 12 dB and slide it to the right to increase the volume that can go all the way up to plus 12 dB. Slide up from the bottom to get back to the main menu. The receiver has a headphone port so you can plug in some headphones to monitor the sound, for example if you're doing an interview with two people. If the headphone volume is too quiet or too loud you can set the volume using this slider. This is separate from the audio level being sent to the camera so it won't affect what's recorded to the video file. To get into the next lot of settings, tap this nut icon. The low cut setting here will help reduce low frequency sounds when you're recording, like traffic rumble or air conditioner rumble. This is not noise reduction, it's just applying some EQ to reduce the volume of those lower frequencies. You can turn this off or on, and when it's on, frequencies of 150Hz or lower will be filtered out. If you already know how to apply EQ when you're editing your video, then I would suggest turning this feature off and just using the EQ features built into whatever video editing software you're using. This is going to give you maximum flexibility in shaping the sound that you want. If you're more of a run and gun style filmmaker and you don't want to spend too much time editing and you don't want to mess around with EQ then you can try turning this feature on and just see how you like the sound of your voice with it turned on and how it affects the overall sound of the video you're making. The next setting is the vibration setting that allows you to control whether or not the transmitters vibrate. If you have this turned on, then the transmitters will do a short vibration when you turn them on and a longer vibration when you turn them off. They'll also do a short vibration when you start internal recording on the transmitter and they'll vibrate twice when you stop internal recording. Having this vibration feature turned on can be useful because it will let you know if you accidentally turn off a transmitter or stop recording. You'll feel the vibration and you'll know that you've done something wrong by accident. The link 
device setting allows you to pair transmitters with the receiver. When you first get your DJI mic kit, the two transmitters should be already linked to the receiver, so you shouldn't need to do this right out of the box. The transmitter gain setting allows you to set how loud each transmitter is. This is basically how much each transmitter will amplify the microphone signal before sending it to the receiver. You can set each transmitter to a different setting, so if you're recording two people whose voices are different loudnesses, you can make sure the volume is set right for each person. You can set each transmitter from negative 12 dB, which is the quietest, to positive 12 dB, which is the loudest. This setting in conjunction with the receiver gain setting that we saw a minute ago and also in conjunction with the audio microphone input levels you've set in your camera will ultimately decide how loud the audio is in the recorded video file. This setting controls how bright the OLED screen is on the receiver. You might want to reduce this if you're recording in a dark location or increase it if you're working outside in the sun. You can also set the language of the text that gets displayed on the receiver. You can set the date and time. You can restore the settings back to their default values. You can check the firmware versions of both the receiver and also the transmitters and also show compliance information. You can also record audio directly onto the built-in memory in each of the transmitters and you can use this as a backup audio recording in case you lose connection from the transmitter to the receiver. If you want to learn how to do this, check out this video next. See ya.